Boo. All right, we'll get questions. Kent, Kent, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Uh, I know you're probably asked this every year, uh, uh, but three-point shooting. Uh, last year, you were middle of the pack in attempts, third in efficiency, took about 21 and a half a game. With this new roster, do you want to do more of that? Well, we shot 30 in the preseason game, so we're off to a good start. Um, I, I think we'll probably be be north of the, the 21 from last year, I, I suspect. Um, you know, just adding McBride into it. I think Collier taking more. Um, yeah, I see it, but at the same time, you know, you, you've got, you know, you got to make sure that, you know, when Sills on the floor that you're not settling. So it's a balance. Um, but yeah, I suspect that we'll be north of the, of the 21. What would be your, what would be like a, a realistic like goal number? And, and if you're being really good at it, won't that just make it easier to get the ball to so? sell? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, we don't, we don't talk about a goal. Uh, we're not playing um, you know, analytic ball, so to speak. Um, you know, the only goals we have are, are on the offensive side is turnovers. We, we don't not make sure we don't turn the ball over, get shots on goal. Uh, I don't want them overthinking whether they're taking a three or not. I just want them to make the easy play. And uh, I would say, you know, unfortunately, you guys you know, can't be here to see some stuff in training camp, but we're doing a nice job of collapsing the defense and kicking it out and either shooting it or then attacking the closeout. So, uh, again, it showed showed in the um, in the game against Washington, you know, we, where we took 33s. Chase, go ahead. Yeah, uh, hey, Cheryl, Dee Dee, we talked about her aggression in the past. Um, and but last year it came obviously when Sill was out, and then like in the preseason game, a lot of players are out. So what's gonna be the biggest challenge in making sure she maintains that aggression when Sill's out there? Ariel Powers Ariel Powers is out there, Cam McBride's out there, Fee's out there, and there are so many other weapons when like in the past maybe we've seen her defer a little bit more. So what's gonna be the key to making sure that she's aggressive DD regardless of who she shares the floor with? Yeah, I think those days are over where, where she's yeah. not. Uh, aggressive. I think there's a maturity now about her and a confidence that, um, you know, again, same thing in the preseason game, you know, she, I forget exactly her line, but uh, did she take eight threes? I, I don't know. Um, she was open and she's going to shoot it. We're, we're running plays for her. Um, I think she understands her place. I think she's taken a step and, and I don't see her going backwards and becoming a, a deferral type. Um, you know, if, if she doesn't shoot it, I don't think it's because she's thinking deferral. Um, but yeah, we got to keep her mindset exactly as you said that, um, you know, that, that it's a really important, uh, component to what we're doing, uh, her staying aggressive, especially as, you know, we go through different lineups and playing with different people. Um, when she's out there, she's got it. When the ball comes to her and she's open, she's got to shoot it regardless of whether she thought she might've missed still or, or something like that, just shoot it. Um, and, and we'll find still the next time. So, well, how important is still to like a locker room? Because like everybody talks about how fond they are of her and like oh yeah, and she's like the mom figure and then like like Rachel's like sometimes if you don't think you can go to Cheryl with something you can go to Sill with it like what what's the value of that having a player like that and have it be one of your best players too I guess yeah I think I uh, correct Rachel they're all afraid to come to Cheryl with it so they go to Sill <laughs> uh, and so Sill has to sift through stuff and figure out what should get to me and what should not uh, it's tremendous value. You know, I, I don't know if it's talked about enough. Um, it seems like, you know, it might be a little more of a narrative now that um, Sill has helped us transition, um, you know, from, from that old team to this new team and helping us form our identity. Um, Sill's been very willing. You got to have players on the, on the court and in the locker room that will say difficult things, um, you know, to teammates knowing that uh, maybe what they're doing isn't going to work. Um, and also be able to communicate with me and, and bring me things like if I'm missing something and, and I'm going to know about it. So Sill is an absolute uh, kind of bridge uh, between uh, players, especially new ones uh, and our, and our coaching staff. And there's tremendous value in that. What is it about her personality that everybody feels so comfortable bringing everything to her? Well, you've been around Sill. I mean, Sill's, Sill's easy to talk to. Uh, she doesn't judge. Um, and I think probably the biggest thing is that she's got all the information. She, uh, she knows exactly how I think. Um, so, you know, if someone comes to her, she might be able to answer it before it needs to get to me because she knows exactly what I want. Um, or again, she'll recognize maybe the answer can't come from her. Maybe it needs to come from me. So she just has a lot of information. And I think that with that, you know, that kind of gives her the knowledge of what needs to happen. And that just her, 
her, you know, her way, her disposition, her personality. You know, she's easy to be around, mostly. <laughs> Cody and Jendel. Cody, go ahead. Even though this team went to the semifinals last year, even though you make three big free agent signings, it seems like uh, you guys are kind of being overlooked again. Um, is there a chip on your shoulder this year? I don't think so. Um, I think right now we're just trying to get it all together. Um, you know, I think maybe, I, I just don't think, I'd be really surprised if anybody noticed any, you know, um, any of the pundits kind of, you know, where they're landing with, you know, now, I will point out to Syl that um, ESPN happens to think she's only the 16th best player uh, in our league. Um, but, but I think overall, I don't think there's a chip on her shoulder. I think there's, uh, you know, players came here to be successful. So I think there's probably more of a focus as opposed to a chip on their shoulder. Um, I told them that, you know, a lot of times these rankings are because they, they, they think that the leadership, um, you know, in, in the coaching position, um, holds the team down. And that's ultimately, I think, why, why you don't ever see them. So it's not them. Um, I think it's what they think of the coach. Chantel, go ahead. Hey, Cheryl. Um, this is a question I would ask to Kayla uh, if I could, but since I can, I'm going to ask it to you. And, and I guess three-pointers are kind of the theme of Monday's availability today. But the last few years, she's been on a team where she's one of two, basically, three-point targets of, of main outside perimeter threats. And I'm curious, you know, your team has so many different threats there. It kind of feels like you could basically have a team out there that anyone could shoot a three at any point. What it, what could it do for her game that she's not going to be the only target or that she's not going to be one of two that defenses can kind of key in? Yeah. I think her life gets easier, you know, much like what Kent was talking about, how Sill's life can be easier. Uh, it is true that when you can share the load and responsibility and that not half of the threes on your team come from one player, um, you know, Vegas wasn't a team that shot a lot. They didn't need to. They had such a strong interior. They got to the foul line a ton. Uh, but I think on this team, uh, sharing the load with responsibility to being able to stretch the defense. Um, I think, you know, Kayla probably doesn't know what that feels like yet, but hopefully we'll be able to, um, you know, at times, you know, you have, and she got to be able to do different things. She can't just be a three point shooter. I think, um, you know, we saw that with Rachel in, in her first game, you don't want players that just are three point shooters and, and one dimensional can't do anything else. And so um, I think when you have that, you know, variety of attack um, and you can balance your field goal attempts, it's okay if more threes than twos, but just making sure that, that you're able to, you know, score from two as well, that will help her. And then also players that can share the load from the three point line. All right, we'll go Leo Kent and then uh, Annie, uh, Leo, go ahead. So obviously the ultimate goal this season is to, you know, win a championship. Um, aside from that, do you have any like smaller, you know, marks that you want to hit or additional goals that you have that you want to make this year? Yeah, I think with such a, you know, such a new team, you know, our mindset, and, and I get it uh, when we've got the, the names of the players that we have and you look at the, you know, the other teams in the league, you feel like Minnesota is a team that, that could compete for a championship. Um, I think that's going to be said, that's the narrative, that's, you know, kind of the expectation that's building around this team. Um, but I see a team that, that needs to sort of be built, its identity needs to be built. Uh, and so that's what my mission and our staff's mission is uh, on this year's team is to get where we're going. Uh, and it might be a little bit uh, before we get where we're going um, without having people here. If you have Collier here, McBride here already, then you feel a lot better about what you're, you know, establishing your identity. It's hard to do it once you start the season. Uh, so that's going to be our challenge. That's our goal that when this season is over, we understand exactly who we are and what we do. Uh, and then you're just building from there, any pieces that you might need to add. Kent, go ahead. How do you feel about your team's defensive rebounding after the preseason game? I know it's hard to tell because your best defensive rebounder didn't play, but I know that's been a, a, a point of emphasis this camp. And uh, you mentioned Sill being ranked 16th. Fee was, I think, fifth, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that was the good news on that. Um, but I, I think it's pretty disrespectful to Sill. Um, our defensive rebounding improved. Uh, a team shot less than 30% 
And I think we only out rebounded by five, six, something like that. Um, so rebound percentage is, is the, is the metric that we want to lock in on, um, which I, I didn't see in this game, what it was. And so if it, if it was above 80, I'm really happy. If it wasn't, then I'm not. Uh, so I don't know the answer to that, but I do think that our mindset is changing a little bit, although we're still showing video of particularly guards that are kind of what we call foot in the bucket. And they're, they're trying to, you know, trying to go the other way before our team has it. Um, so just, you know, shifting, shifting the mindset for some players that maybe haven't been asked to do that before. Um, Crystal and Rachel have been here. Crystal knows I'm asking for it. As I told Crystal, I never asked her to compete with Syl for a rebound. I didn't say that. Um, rebounds that Syl doesn't get are, are the rebounds that Crystal needs to be competing for. So I think we're still getting there, Kent, but I think we, we, we improved a little bit. Um, and, you know, obviously it's all about matchups too, which teams are really going to put pressure on your defense or rebounding. Um, I'm not sure where Washington, they typically have been a team that will challenge you on the glass. And so I thought overall it was probably a little bit of progress. All right, we'll go last question to Annie. Annie, go ahead. Hey, Cheryl, I have a throwback question for you today. Um, can you describe what those battles between the Lynx and the Sparks were like, especially from 2015 to 2017 when y'all were trading the title back and forth? Yeah, 2016 and 2017. Gosh, um, what was it like, you said? Uh, yeah, like the, the just the dynamic between the two teams. Yeah, it was... Um, you know, you didn't know it the, maybe the first time you played in 2016, you know, or maybe even the second time that you went against each other. Um, but by the time we got, you know, we competed for, you know, the, the championship uh, against one another. Uh, by the time we got there, um, both teams really, really talented. I mean, look at the players on the floor <laughs> in that, you know, in those series with those two teams, two teams that were just so good. I think Brian and I were so blessed to, you know, to, to coach players like that. Uh, but there was a healthy um, dislike for one another, um, you know, so much so that affects your free agency. No way in hell is a spark going to come be a Minnesota Lynx during that time and vice versa. Uh, obviously, Simone proved that different once we got to 2019 that that had worn off. Um, but that's a, um, God, the intensity. I think it drains you just talking about it right now. I feel drained, uh, you know, just thinking about all they had to go into to get up for each other, because if you did not bring it, you're going to get beat. And both teams knew that about the other. And so you had to really get up for it every single time and be at your best. Uh -huh. uh, so that was incredible uh, to be a part of, you know, when you're in it, you know, you're, you're just trying to do your part, you know, but when I go back and I look at that and watch those games, goodness, you know, the intensity and the passion uh, and the talent talent was incredible and it was tremendous for the league i think it did a lot for the league uh those two series and the interest in it and uh by the time we got the 2017 those regular season games were all like you know like championship games mm -hmm. and uh you know then obviously we had a chance to uh, avenge a home loss in front of our fans for you know on an offensive rebound put back um you know, we'll, we'll skip the part about the, you know, each team has their clock issues and officiating in that 2016 series. Um, but oftentimes I look at 2017, I say, I don't know how we won. Uh, when I look at, how, you know, the talent that LA had on that floor, um, you know, Sims had a hell of a season uh, that season. And um, I don't know how we won it, but I know that was an incredibly fulfilling championship because it was really, really hard. And then quick follow up as someone who coached against her, how would you assess how Candace Parker has changed how the four or five position is played in the WNBA? I don't know if she's changed it so much as uh, maybe the best to ever do it in terms of, you know, her passing ability. Uh, mm -hmm. It's, 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 I don't think it's underrated. I think everybody understands it about her that um, she just made everything really, really difficult. Uh, whereas other opponents you could play that don't have that, that, you know, you can scheme for it. Um, Candace, you know, a lot of things that we like to do, um, she just had an ability to, um, have success against it, mm -hmm. uh, mobility. Um, I think, you know, again, the, the passing, um, the, you know, the intelligence for what we were doing and how to counter it, just like you see with all great players. We talked about that with Sue Bird, mm -hmm. but Candace Parker, the same way in her position. So I don't think she's changed the, I think. I wish that, that uh, you know, like the impact that a Steph Curry had on the game and changed it, you know, to all these threes now and not much of a big player. 
Uh, I wish that because of how Candace Parker plays the game at the power forward spot or the center spot, wherever you want to put her, I wish we had more players growing up uh, that had the skill set in the post. Uh, mm -hmm. We all, there's not enough of them to go around in the league. Uh, mm -hmm. So when you have her, you're immediately special because you don't have, most teams don't have anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, I wish that was something that was emulated by, by younger players and have that talent uh, to be such a good passer uh, as well as obviously a scorer, or shot blocker and all that good stuff. Thank you so much, Cheryl. You're welcome. Matt, did you have one last follow-up question? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, follow up to Leo's question on, you know, setting the little goals and you mentioned, and I, uh, you know, trying to set an ID or an identity of the team. What would your vision be once you get that to that spot? What would this team's identity be ideally? Uh, you're talking about more than a year look, um, which is how I'm looking at it as, uh, more than a year. Um, you know, I don't know, you know, when you look at the contracts of some of the players that we signed and where we're at, you know, you can call it a three year plan. Um, I don't think that we are exactly where we're going to be after uh, this first year. I think it'll, it'll kind of reveal itself in terms of where we need to go to truly put ourselves kind of cemented and, you know, maybe somebody might pick us as a favorite. Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know that we're there yet. Um, but I think, you know, the, the identity is going to be born the same way the identity of, of the 2011 team was born it's through battles together. And, and I have to learn, we gotta all be in the trenches together. And so identities will come out uh, offensively, schematically what we're running, who we're running it for. Um, McBride will know, okay, these are her plays. AP knows these are her plays, Sill, whatever. Um, and, and it just, uh, it takes time to get through that. And, and so I think I'll be better able to answer, you know, those are the goals, you know, because that's what I feel like you do it for every team. It's, it's every season. You got to figure out what you have and what are going to be the strengths and who are the go-to plays, you know, for such and such player. So those are all things that we're trying to get to as far as a goal of this staff. Um, and, you know, I don't know if the players think that way. I don't think that they do. Um, but, uh, you know, they all just roll up in here thinking that a championship is just going to happen. Uh, we got to kind of show them that that's not how it happens. And uh, there's a lot of work to be done to be able to get there. Thank you. You're welcome. Perfect. All right. That'll be it for Cubs today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. To be fair, Cheryl, so was only like an early season MVP candidate last year. Oh, was she? Yeah. And she was not on. Like it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So 16th. She dropped to 16th. So yeah. It must that's be. Right. I, I don't know. Her productivity is like well, like some of the best ever, you know, seasons. And uh, where she was at PER wise, I mean, she's like top three in the league. So, but 16, okay. They're so, yeah. using different numbers. That's right. <laughs>